So today we are looking at solving rational equations. So, so far in this chapter, we have had expressions. There haven't been equal signs. We've just been simplifying, adding and subtracting. Now I have an actual equation, all right? So I'm going to be solving for x. x is going to equal some number. And it'll be something that I can check. I can take that number and plug it back in. All right, so um, where do you think we start with this? How might you solve this? Yes, common denominators. Common denominators is your best friend. So if I look at these, what's my common denominator going to be? 6x, right? If I want everybody to have the same denominator, it's going to be 6x. So what will I need to multiply this first fraction by? 6 over 6. This middle one. 3 over 3, and then the last one, x over x, right? Okay. Right, but I'm not going to treat it any differently. I want everybody to have a common denominator. So if I simplify each one now, so this first fraction is going to be 6 over 6x plus 3 over 6x equals x over 6x. All right. Now everybody has a common denominator. That's pretty good. Do you remember way back when, when we were doing, you might have even done this in part one. If you want to get rid of all the fractions, wasn't that nice when we could just get rid of all the fractions? What did you just say? You were going to say something. Uh, not by 10. Look at my denominators, 6x, 6x, and 6x. If I want to clear all of those fractions, I can just multiply everybody by 6x, right? Multiply everybody by 6x. Look what happens. All those denominators cancel out. So you're just left with 6 plus 3 equals x. Oops. So what's x, guys? 9. That's it. Wait, so when it has, like, the equals, you always want to cancel out the fractions? Mm-hmm. You get your, well, you could do it a couple of different ways. I like to get all my common denominators, and I multiply everybody by that common denominator, and that wipes out all of the fractions. You could do these two in one step. Um, so maybe once we get the hang of this a little bit better, we'll try just combining these two into one step. But let's try another one. Um, let's see. Let's try this one here. We've got x over x plus 2 plus 4 over x minus 2 equals 1. What's the denominator of the 1? Yeah, I'm just going to write this. If it's ever a whole number, I'm just going to write it as a fraction. So I'm just going to write it as 1 over 1, just so that everyone's a fraction so I can keep everything consistent. So the, f yeah, go ahead. Well, what's your common denominator going to be? X plus 2. Times x minus 2. You're going to have to multiply these two by each other. Oh, yeah, you can mm -hmm. So my common denominator here, if I look at everybody, it's got to be x plus 2 times x minus 2. That's the only way to get all the denominators the same. So over here, what do I need to multiply this first one by? x minus 2. So I'll multiply that by x minus 2 over x minus 2. This middle one needs x plus, x two. plus 2 over x plus 2. And then what's this one need? X minus two and x plus two. It needs them both. x plus 2 times x minus 2 on top and on bottom. Now everybody has a common denominator, right? Agreed? So let's simplify each fraction. What does this one now become? x squared minus, careful, 2x, right? And it'll be over x minus 2x plus 2. This one's going to be mm 
Mm-hmm. Over that same denominator, x minus 2, x plus 2. And then this one here. Well, here's the thing. You are going to want. I'm sorry? Oh, thank you. Well, here's your problem. You're going to want to FOIL these together because I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to anyway. Right, right. So I, I'm going to leave my denominator as x plus 2, x minus 2. But I need to FOIL that numerator together. What's that actually going to get me? x squared minus 4, right? Because you have the same two binomials, 1's plus, 1's a minus, so you get x squared minus 4. You'll see why that's important in just a minute, because what am I going to multiply everybody by? x minus 2, x plus 2, so that's going to cancel out every single denominator. So the equation that I'm left with is now just the numerators, x squared minus 2x plus 4x min uh, plus 8 equals x squared minus 4. So if you had not foiled this together then, you would have to do it right now anyway. Because look what I have. I have an equation that I need to solve. How would you solve this? Yeah, well first I can I can combine some like terms over here. So it'd be x squared plus two x plus eight equals x squared minus four. Now what do you want to do? Get um, x uh, Well yeah, let's get the x squareds together. So if I minus x squared from both sides, they cancel each other out. Okay. Now it's even easier. Two x plus eight equals uh, negative four. So now Mm-hmm. 2x equals a negative 12, and then divide by 2, and x is a negative 6. Oops, sorry. There's one more layer that I need to add to this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can do that. I'll write some step-by-steps. Yeah, so get every fraction to have common denominators, and then you clear the fractions by multiplying what by that common denominator is. And then you're just going to solve the equation formed by the numerator. But there's one more thing that I need to talk to you about that we have to be mindful of and watch out for. So I got x as a negative 6. You can certainly go back to the original and plug that in and see if it works out. And it should. So this isn't something we have to check. Let's check it real quick. If x is negative 6, negative 6 over negative 6 plus 2 would be negative 4, plus 4 over negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. I'm wondering if that really is equal to 1. Well, what's this really? Isn't that 2 thirds? Um, not 2 thirds. 3 halves minus 1 half. Is that really 1? Yes, it is. So I am able to check that negative 6 really is my right answer. Here's what you absolutely have to do, though. You have to make sure that if you go back to the original, because this will happen, whatever number you get, you can never have a 0 in the denominator. What number, say I had gotten a number, and I would plug it back in, what number would have given me a 0 in the denominator right here? Negative 2. What number would have get me, given me a 0 in the denominator here? Positive 2. So if I had done all my work out and one of my answers happened to be positive 2 or negative 2, I would have to throw it away because it would make my original problem undefined. That can and will happen, that you do all the work, you get a nice answer. Before you move on to the next one, take that number and make sure it doesn't, wouldn't get you a 0 in any denominators in your original. Okay, so please just double check that.